Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhousehomeboon.com and today I'm going to be doing another cozy winter cook with me. Now you might notice that it is dark outside. That's because I'm getting started the night before. I haven't been the best in the past couple years about prepping things like granola or something for breakfast the night before. And I used to do it more and it really made for a smoother morning. So I'm trying to get back in the habit. This is the second time that I've done this. So we'll see if it turns into a habit. But I have a really great granola recipe over on the blog and I wanna get back into making it more regularly. You can find it on farmhouseonmoon.com if you search rustic granola. I will also leave it linked below, but I'm just gonna start by adding two cups of oats. Now I put a lot of nuts and coconut in this, so that way there's not too much unsoaked oatmeal. It also makes it a nice variety of different nutritional things. Now, I've never tried this, but in one of my granolas that I really like from the store, they used popped amaranth. I looked at the back, and they apparently have that in there. So I'm gonna add some of this in. It's not in the original recipe, but it gives it a nice texture, at least it does in the granola from the store. So I'm really hoping that that just kind of takes it up a little bit. Also going to pulse, I have a combination of walnuts and pecans in here in my blender. I believe in the recipe I call for three cups of chopped nuts. Now, when I make my granola, I don't normally measure, but if you're looking to actually get like the exact measurements, it's over there. You can really use any nuts for this step. I do prefer walnuts and pecans. That's just what I normally do. Okay, I'm just gonna add them in here with the oats. I think I'm putting in way more than three cups, but It'll be delicious. It always is delicious. The key is you want to add enough oil for the amount of ingredients that you have because that's what makes it really crispy. The next thing I'm going to add in is some coconut. Normally I do flakes and shreds just because it adds a nice texture to it, but all I have this time is flakes. And then I'm going to add in my popped amaranth. I probably will do probably about a cup. Let me bring the camera over so you can see how much I have here. Okay, so here's our combination of coconut, oats, and popped amaranth. Now I'm gonna add about a cup of oil. I use coconut oil. Now normally I like to combine the oil and the honey, cinnamon, vanilla together first. I'm just being lazy tonight, so I'm gonna do it all in one bowl. And then what I'll do is I'll add a little salt and then I'll taste it and see how it tastes. I'm probably am gonna stir in some cinnamon or pumpkin spice as well. I'm not even gonna use the cup measure. I can definitely gauge it by taste and feel at this point. That's the really wonderful thing about granola. You just need any combination of cereal ingredients, which in this case is oatmeal, nuts, the coconut, the amaranth. You could do any nut, you could do any type of coconut, whether it's the shreds or it's the flakes. You could do any other puffed grain. So I don't know, there's puffed rice, there's probably puffed quinoa, I'm not really sure. But you combine those, so it's cereal ingredients, and then just a combination of oil and honey to taste, really. A little salt, a little spice, like pumpkin spice. I really feel like salt brings out the flavor on things that are sweet. Uh, vanilla is good to add to sometimes. Get a little taste of it, see how it tastes, and then just spread it on a baking sheet and bake it. So really, you almost can't go wrong. I've just pour in oil, pour in honey with whatever cereal ingredients I have. If you only have oats, that's totally fine too. You don't even have to have any coconut or nuts or anything. And then of course, after you bake it, adding in some dried fruit is good. And in my recipe, I like to do a variety of fruits. So I'll do some dried apricots, chopped up, raisins, dried cranberries, really makes for a nice granola. Then I'm gonna get in the oven on 350 degrees and I'm gonna get some bread going. So another prep thing I did today was I got my sourdough French bread recipe going. I'm gonna let that bake for about 30 minutes, stir it halfway in between because it tends to get really brown around the edges. And this is not my normal uh, bread dough recipe. This is the French bread that's been on my blog for quite a while. 
but I made a few modifications. I do like to update my blog pretty regularly. Whenever I learn something new or some new technique, I like to update it. And I have found that with anything sourdough, I really like to do stretch and folds. Whenever a dough is fermented versus a quick yeast, the stretch and folds are really better for it than kneading. And so my original recipe, I did the kneading until the window pane test. This time I just did stretch and folds, even though it's the same amount. So it's the same exact recipe as my normal French bread recipe, except for with the stretch and folds. So we're gonna see how it goes. The good thing about trying all of this in my own home is that no matter what we eat, the result. So this will be perfect. So I'm just cutting the dough in half from earlier and shaping it into French loaves. I'm going to get it into an oiled nine by 13 and I'm gonna to top it with plastic wrap or something that's airtight, and I'm going to get it into the refrigerator overnight and do that second rise in the refrigerator. Because there again, that's another thing I've learned about sourdough, is I almost always prefer the final rise in the fridge. So we'll see how this goes. If it's better the old way, well then I'll just leave the blog post the same. But I do like to play around with my recipes constantly and update them as need be. And so that's what I have on the plan for tomorrow. I do already like the huge bubbles that are in this dough. I am experimenting with something. It's very loud in my house. My kids are listening to their times table song. But I originally had this rising in the fridge overnight in a glass dish. And I'm afraid, based on my knowledge of other sourdough breads, that I won't get any oven spring if I can't preheat the oven first, which I can't put a glass dish in a 500 degree oven. So I transferred them over to parchment paper and I'm preheating a pizza stone We'll see if that works. Obviously, I can't put a lid on the pizza stone. So we're just gonna see if that's the thing that makes the oven spring better. I'm sure there's some experienced sourdough bakers out there who are like, ah, oh, you're doing it all wrong. So definitely leave comments below and let me know, but this is what I'm gonna try. I'm hoping to get big, beautiful loaves of uh, bread where the scoring opens up more in my last recipe. The bread was delicious, it was super easy, but the scoring doesn't open up, so it just doesn't have that same look, and that's what I'm really going for here. So I brush the top with some milk, and hopefully I'm gonna get a nice brown, crusty bread. We'll see. The other night, my daughter Johanna and I came up with a dessert. So lately I've been putting egg yolks in my coffee. It's a long story, I read about it on Instagram. <laughs> and so that leaves us with a lot of egg whites, and the other day we wanted to use them up and so we whipped them into a fluffy, almost like you'd put on a meringue. And then we whipped some cream and then we were out of cocoa powder, which was a happy accident because we were forced to use something else. And so we had this date lady chocolate spread. And so we then whipped that into it. So it was like whipped cream combined with whipped egg whites combined with this date lady chocolate spread, which is just, it's cocoa powder, it's sweetened with dates, um, it has cocoa butter, it's delicious, vanilla. And it was the best mousse dessert. And so, what else did we put in? Did we put a little bit of cocoa powder? I think we had a little cocoa powder left. I think we had a little cocoa powder, the egg whites, the whipped cream, and the <laughs> date spread. And it was so good. So we're gonna do that again. Are they nice and fluffy? Yes. Stiff peaks? Uh huh. It's really butter. I think it's not butter. Not it's not, it's just really thick no, cream. Oh, yeah. Don't dip down to the milk. Make sure you're only getting cream. We strained off some cream from our milk. All right, and we're gonna whip it up. We like to add in the date spread before it's fully whipped. That way, we don't turn it into butter in the process of incorporating it. We also add a little bit of maple syrup. I completely forgot that we 
added an additional sweetener and a little bit of vanilla as well. I'm putting the fluffy egg whites back in. For lunch, I just seared up some steaks. Now, I feel like I picked probably the worst cut of steak possible because it ended up being really tough. It was okay because I cut it really small, but I would suggest a more tender cut of meat and that would make this a whole lot better. Now for the French bread, it ended up turning out better than before, but it still didn't brown as much as I'd hoped. I think I need to turn the oven up a bit and I think I cut a little bit too deep on some of the scoring because some of them opened up really nicely, some of them didn't. Again, all sourdough experiments are always edible, always delicious. It's just a matter of getting it perfect if that's something of interest to you, which to me it's really fun. And bonus is that I actually get a meal on the table at the same time that I'm trying to experiment and work with these things. So I served steak over my French bread, added Swiss cheese, and then I made a little au jus on the side, which I used chicken broth. Now you should use a beef broth, but this is just what I had. After taking some of the broth out, I actually put a little bit more water in and I'm cooking it more for dinner. I did a little wine, Worcestershire, salt, pepper, thyme, garlic powder, onion powder, and then just serve that with the sandwiches and with some sauerkraut. I'm realizing that I need to make more sauerkraut. We're almost to the end, and usually I try to make it well before we're out, so I'm gonna be getting on that as well. For dinner, I'm going to make a homemade chicken noodle soup. One of those comforting meals that's perfect for winter. I realize winter is definitely dwindling down, which is wonderful, but we still have those cold days. This is a great comforting meal for that. I'm gonna make some einkorn noodles and then just basic soup ingredients. So garlic, onion, celery, carrots, chicken, and I'm gonna use my chicken feet bone broth. If you watched a recent What We Eat In A Week video, you know all about me making bone broth with chicken feet, which sounds disgusting, but it makes delicious, very, very gelatinous, so healthy. If you're doing something like the GAPS diet or any gut healing protocol, it's perfect for that. We aren't on any diets like that, but always healing to have a bone broth like that. Salt, pepper, herbs, and then adding in the noodles. This is gonna be a really delicious and comforting meal for winter. I just recently picked up another chicken order from Fed From The Farm. They're local to me, but they do ship. That's where I also get my chicken feet, chicken necks, meaty backs and frames, all for my broth making. So I'm just going to sear this, cut it up, and then add it to my soup. I will leave a link to Fed From The Farm down in the description box below. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll leave any links to recipes down in the description box below. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new to my channel, I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse.